What's up, YouTube? What's up, family? First, I want to say, uh, I want to give thanks to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to thank God the Father and the Holy Spirit for uh, putting all this together, this thing I call it life, because I'm about to tell you the story about uh, menace from uh, drifters. And uh, I really don't know what happened to him. You know what I mean? Um, and a lot of homies, you know, a lot of people don't get out of that life. Um, and by the grace of God, I did. So I'm forever going to give thanks to God forever, always, all the glory. Anything good that you see in me is him. And, and by him, I mean our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, so I knew Menace because he lived in the hood. Um, he's from Drifters. He's, uh, he's the only dude I knew that, that, uh, lived in 18th Street neighborhood. And, um, you know, he, he was a type of dude that didn't bow down. He didn't, um, he wasn't afraid. He was, he was all up in your face or when he was from Drifters. Uh, people would walk by, you know, 18th Street would walk by in front of his house and he would hit a mob, you know, and so everyone knew he was a drifter. And so, uh, uh, he, he lived uh, right between Bonnie Bray and Westlake, right? There's a that notorious alley where Happy used to live and then Sharky lived in that uh, yellow, uh, yellow, white and yellow uh, Victorian house up in the, up in the second floor. Um, but he had a big old porch. We were taking that shark as he, he was from my crew, so was happy. Um, and so uh, we kicked it there. Yeah, our crew was so big, like um, in the Pico Union, we're big and we're spread out. We had a different place in El Sereno, we had one, and we had some in South Central, but they were way smaller places. Um, but our, you know, the Pico Union, claim that we're big, we're so big, we would have different hangout spots. I'm saying, and we would, and we would go sometimes just hang out there. You want to go visit the homies, you know what I mean? Um, but we would kick it, you know what I'm saying? So depending on what drug you would like to do or, or what, or what was your, uh, your poison, your bigger poison. Um, and so I used to like to pound. And I was really uh, and smoking weed too much. Um, so I would take it with, with Sharky and his brother Jay and then uh, my brother Debo. Actually the first time I ever got drunk, was right there with my brother Devo and uh, Sharky and Jay and a couple of other homies that were right there on his porch. I was about to say when I was 14 and we were was off, off of Budweiser and I was like, man, this is the greatest feeling I've ever had. I felt so happy. But it's never the same after that. Uh, so, um, yeah, so we were kicked there and Menace, he lived right in front of Sharky's pack, right? And his dad, you could say he, he did too, had a, a business. Uh, right next to his house, and that business was uh, movies. He sold uh, VHS, you know, like Blockbuster, even before Blockbuster came. He would uh, burn the, the movies. We all, his dad had elephantitis or uh, acromalgy, you know, like that thing that only the giant had where your hands are massive and your nose is massive and, you know, your feet are massive, basically, and your ears, everything. He had that, um, and Menace, he was a big bottle, like, he was a big bottle. He was like, I would say about six foot two, uh, maybe 340 pounds. And so uh, me and the homies, uh, you know, all my homies uh, were pretty big too. Well, maybe, maybe not, maybe not all of us because a poke, he was probably like five foot three, 130 pounds, but, you know, but the rest of us, yeah, we were uh, pretty big. And so um, I'm saying that because uh, it seemed like uh, menace wanted to uh, start a clique right there in 18th Street neighborhood with us, right? Because uh, we began and he would come over and just you know, start telling his war stories about how, you know, 18th Streeters came through here and he hit a mob because of Bell, and, you know, um, and that they, well, this I did see, I mean, I didn't, I didn't see uh, it actually happening, but I saw the graffiti um, where, uh, you know, 18th Street would we'll hit up on, on his dad's business because his dad's business was had a wall like this, but bigger, and they would bust for like Oslo right there. And that would get under Menace's skin. And they also wrote like, on his house too, not like his actual house, but in the patio outside the garden area, there was like a small wall and they would head up right there. And he would cross them out. He would cross them out right there in their own hood. And he, well, I guess he wrote in his own path, I'm getting, you know, and he would put the drifters, Menace. So 
the school was, uh, he was, he was down. He was down, he got respect, and uh, he would cruise around in his carro. He had a Monte Carlo, um, a white one, and he would cruise bumping music. So it's like, he would get, you know, like, uh, so he wasn't afraid or nothing like that. Um, but yeah, he would come kick it, and he would drink and stuff, and I didn't like that, you know what I mean? Because, and yeah, he would talk about it. He'd be like, hey, man, you get drifters. You bring some of my homies over and this and that. And I was like, nah, I'm cool, man, because what could drifters offer me? You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm thinking. Like, besides war with 18th Street. So, you know, I'm thinking to myself, you want to start a clique in um, an 18th Street neighborhood, you want to use us as a uh, human collateral. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I stopped kicking it right there. You know, but him and Homie Sharky were like this. They almost look like uh, like each other. You know what I mean? Because Trey was a little bit shorter. Maybe he was maybe like around 5'10. But he, he was big. Trey was. Uh, 510 about 300 pounds. Um, and so, and then all our homies were big because then we, we had the homeboy tunes. Because this dude was probably like six foot four, solid, she's six foot four, solid 250 pounds. Um, and uh, Ryan was maybe like six foot one, that was like maybe 240 pounds. I'm saying uh, my brother was six foot one, he was probably like 220 pounds, and Stern was like six feet. You know, it was probably 180 pounds, you know what I'm saying? I'm like 10, you know, back then I was probably like 200 pounds, you know what I mean? And then, um, who else? All of us, you know, we all had shaved heads, literally shaved heads, you know, some of us and me, I had a goatee. My goatee, goatee grew perfect too back then, so I was, you know, like 15, 16 when this was happening. And so I told Sharky, hey, you gotta tell him to stop coming over here, dude, you know, otherwise uh, we're gonna get lit up. You know what I mean? And so, Sharky and I, he kept kicking a little. So I stopped kicking it right there. And then something happened because, um, uh, I don't know if they went in there uh, to, because he didn't pay his taxes or, or something, but they went in, they went into his, his uh, eighteen shooters, went into um, the, the, the dad's business, the movies, and uh, they beat him up. You know what I mean? And so, anyways, and so then, as they stopped kicking it and then Menace, um, he kept doing his thing, dude. He would talk about uh, shootouts that he would have with him. He said that he would, that from his pad, he's like, I just came from outside of, I would see him and start blasting. These are menaces stories, you know what I mean? I wouldn't doubt it because he was a down fool like that, so. But yeah, um, after that, you know, I heard, you know, this is not um, uh, information that I have firsthand. I heard that, you know, he got busted and that he got killed inside prison but then on one of my on one of the comment sections in one of my videos a dude from drifters uh, the spence size i don't remember your name but he said that he was still around so i don't know what happened i just know that around 96 or 1996 or 97 uh i'm here for menace anymore like uh, you know he, he moved or he got busted i don't know but he wasn't around and at that time sharky moved too you know what i'm saying because um they kept kicking it together, right there in front of his pad. And so, um, then Sharky took off to a uh, Florence neighborhood over there, so Sharky did all right. And then I asked him about Menace, and he didn't know. He's like, I don't know, I haven't heard from him or nothing. And so, yeah, that's the story of Menace, uh, from, as I knew it, uh, how he would have shootouts with uh, 18th Street right in front of his pad. And to hype us up, to try to get us into Drifters, into the Drifters neighborhood, or what, and start our own click, but, uh, I definitely wasn't with it, and none of the homies were with it. I kind of thought Sharky was gonna, was gonna get in, but the thing he moved out of the hood, because uh, you know, the Sharky, he wasn't like a, the type that that would like to, you know, you know, put in work. So you know, it's good that he didn't get into the Drifters neighborhood, because uh, he would probably been smoked by the 18s. So yeah, that's my story, man. I'm out here in Vietnam, and it's still kind of hard for me to tell these stories. It just brings me back to to things that you know. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, God the Father, the Holy Spirit have have been working through me and out of me to heal. I'm saying, but after I say them, I do heal. I do begin to heal. And um, look, guys, I keep looking over here because it's so beautiful. Look what God is allowing me to see now. Look at this peace. This is peace, guys. You got to bow down in adoration. And then God the Father will rise you up in confidence. The purer your heart closer you get to Christ.
And I went through some difficult spiritual training in order for my heart to clean. All envy, all hate, all anger. And I mean, it's a battle every day, you know, um, but, but God knows your heart. He knows your heart and he knows if you're half stepping or if you're coming in, you know, all the way, if you're going in all the way. And that's why there's um, a lot of people out there that give Christ all the, all the glory and lip service. You know what I mean? But then their actions are uh, saying otherwise. Their, their actions, I'm thinking about famous people, you know, like the, I don't even want to say the names, bro, because I don't want to taint this video. Uh, people say, uh, you know, I don't want to wanna taint it. But there's famous people out there that say they're uh, Christian and give all the glory to Jesus Christ, which is good. But what about your heart? You're still doing these things. And I think that's a problem with Christianity in the United States. More specifically, they feel that since we're saved by grace, we could keep on sinning. And if you keep on sinning, um, that means you don't love Christ. If you do sin, uh, you know, we're human. You know, we're, we're human. So if you do sin, you bow down in adoration. You bow down, you um, ask for forgiveness, you repent, you know, and you keep on moving on. But if you're willfully committing sins, and giving, and, and, and in the public eye, you're giving all the glory to God. Um, you're not fooling God, you know? And I think a lot of people get fooled by that. They get fooled by people who, um, oh, this guy's a Christian, you know? This famous person's a Christian, you know? He's, he's Catholic, you know? So he he has to be good. So, you know, and, and he's a celebrity. Things, the, the immoral things that they're doing, you know? So... All I'm saying is if you're going to be a true disciple of Christ, you got to go all in. You got to go, you got to go all in. You know what I'm saying? It starts with your heart. You know, you got to ask him to, uh, to purify your heart, to clear it of any and all things that hinder love. You know, if it hinders love, if it hinders love, then, you know, get it out of my heart. Because the number one thing that you can always, that you can always count on as a Christian is uh, for guidance, is what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? So what would he do in every situation that you encounter? Ask yourself that, what would he do? Like you're, you're saying you're Christian, but then you're running like your friends, you know, only fans. I mean, come on, you know, little things like that, you know, and, and you're still listening to secular music that talks about, you know, promiscuity and all this other stuff. You know, where's your heart at? You know what I'm saying? You can't fool the Lord. You can fool yourself. And then you wonder, where are the blessings? Father Lord, I've been praying all the time. Where are the blessings? God's going to be like, well, I know your heart, son. I know your heart and it's not in the right place. So get that right and then uh, the blessings will come. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. It wasn't much. It was just a story about a vato from uh, Pico Union um, who took on 18 his name was Menace, and there's other uh, stories about other people that I'm going to talk about and the stories of, of my past that I've done, which those, like I said, are very near and dear to me. And I'm basically going to be, uh, well, like, if you do want to hear those stories, my stories um, about me personally, the things I did and I got into that, if you like stories like these about real stories, not research stories of people that that um go on the internet and find out who you know who so and so was and then tell they tell his story according to the research uh, this is first hand knowledge that I got from people from people in a people union so there's other stories that are coming in the future you know I just say I'm gonna have a relationship with them but you know I did know them and the reputation and you know I'm gonna say my personal opinion um, and, you know, as, as how I viewed them and who they were, just to put, put a, a face to uh, people, to just say, uh, just be statistics. You don't want to just be statistics. There's actually real people out there with real lives that um, lived that PTSD life in, in the Vargas. And it's a uh, shout out to everybody from people you knew, even the enemies, you know. And shout out to everybody from LA and any place that you grew up in that have PTSD. 
And if you're still alive and you're doing good, and by good I mean you're in the good graces of God, then that makes me happy, man, because life's hard. Life's hard, and I just hope that the devil no longer has that influence over you because, um, you know, no good, you know what I mean? No good. So once you, and if you're still in that, in the mix, try removing yourself. Remove yourself from there. You move out like I did. You just turn off your cell phone, get a new number, and, uh, and bounce. You're leaving bad. You're leaving the devil and going to good, going to Christ. This life here on earth is a test. The sooner you realize that, the sooner you start walking down the right path. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, man. Stay tuned for more.